Up next on the bottom line, a bill that will protect the lives of thousands of young residents is signed into law. Two, the ribbon is cut three. in White Oak on a new athletic field that everyone can be proud of. A Montgomery County mom organizes a special surprise for some graduating fifth graders. All are welcome here. Yay. The county recognizes Pride Month by raising the pride flag in Rockville. And we'll catch up with Mark Burgell, the founder of A Wider Circle, who's devoted his whole life to ending poverty in the most authentic way. I think the word commitment gets used a lot, but it should be paired with the word courage because it takes, I think, a certain amount of courage to say, hey, I'm going to give everything I've got. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Ezekiel was my only child. He was my baby, that also my companion. I miss him very much. Last fall, two-year-old Ezekiel Gamezi died when he fell from the third floor window of his family's apartment building in Tacoma Park. Council President Tom Hucker and County Executive Mark Elrich signed Bill 5120, Ezekiel's law, which aims to prevent these tragic accidents from happening again. Each year in the United States, 15 to 20 children under the age of 11 die, and nearly 15,000 are injured because of falls from windows. It requires landlords and apartment building owners to install window guards in buildings where children younger than 10 live. It applies to all multifamily buildings, and landlords must also provide window guards for any tenant who makes that request. We have high hopes for Ezekiel. He had a brighter future ahead of him. I think of him every day and wonder why this happened. The Gamezi family say they are honored to have this law named after Ezekiel, and they are grateful to the council for making this a safer place for children. Welcome everybody to the reopening of the White Oath Athletic Field. It's a dream come true for hundreds of young athletes, oh! but especially for Coach Fofo. I'm having a game with the other council member next week. Alongside community members, athletes, and county officials, Coach Fofo cut the ribbon on the newly remodeled athletic field at the White Oak Community Recreation Center. Three. And to him, this project is about so much more than soccer. And I'm very going to take this moment to take a, uh, to be grateful, to thank all the council members who support the black, brown community, the African community, French community speaking, to grant us, uh, to give us the money to support the kids here. Every young person in this county, in this, in this community here in White Oak and all across East County, deserves, has a right to first class recreational facilities. Does it make you proud to come play on this field? Mm -hmm, yes. As I look at these young people here today, what your community looks like reflects on what you think about yourself and what you think is possible and what you think you can do and what you think you should contribute to your community. We need to do a better job in this county investing in those core resources because you know, it's one of the most heavily used park resources that we have. The turf at the new field is all natural. So look, right here, take a swing. Yes, that's better. And it can be used for multiple activities and sports. Sports is so important in the development of teamwork and bringing different people together from different communities and backgrounds. And not just win games, but forge partnerships and alliances and friendships. Kids of all ages came to celebrate this long awaited day. And even some of the big kids took a shot oh! <laughs> so you think you're bad now, at hoofing the ball. But in the end, this field will not only be a great place to watch a sporting event, it will bring all members of the community together. He's the next generation. I'm the next generation. Where do you point to where you are? That's me over there. That hair, I don't know where it went. My name is Mark Burgell. That's my mom and dad. And I'm the uh, founder of A Wider Circle. A Wider Circle is a nonprofit in Montgomery County that addresses poverty. Poverty is more than a blight on our society. It's an embarrassment to all of us uh, to make sure that nobody goes hungry or that nobody goes without a bed or without clothes. And, and we have the knowledge of how we need to support schools and how we should change housing to make sure that everybody has a chance to thrive. 
Mark Burgell has always been committed to doing what's right, thanks to his father. He, he always used to say, you just do what's right. No matter the situation, you always do what's right. Burgell is unconditionally supportive in the fight to end poverty, thanks to his mother. And my mom was unconditionally supportive. Even if we disagreed on things or I was a brat, my mom was unconditionally supportive. He felt lucky to be raised by two successful parents. Because it's my mom graduating from law school. My dad was very successful, a rising executive at Montgomery Ward. I was lucky. I was given a lot without working for it. And so that's why I think my desire to give back is so strong. And so he made a commitment to end poverty. I think the word commitment gets used a lot, but it should be paired with the word courage because it takes, I think, a certain amount of courage to say, hey, I'm going to give everything I've got. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And he did whatever it took. <laughs> this is my apartment, and I converted it into an office when I started the wider circle because I would not have to pay rent. There were just eight desks and just a couple hundred square feet. And I think turning my apartment into an office was a bit of a metaphor uh, for how everything in my life was focused on the work. I, I gave up relationships. I worked seven days a week. 15 hours a day. I, in fact, felt privileged to be able to work that much. And that's me. So all through my life when I had a coach who was tough on me, I, I like that. Uh, I, I don't mind um, even being told that I need to work harder. I did watch as I saw many folks in many sectors talk about ending poverty, but not with a commitment. And it was always discouraging for me that People only wanted to meet Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. And I think I expected anybody who came to a wider circle to want to work that hard. So since 2008, I have not slept in a bed. I either sleep on the couch or the floor. His commitment to those in need led him to give up his bed. I had to give this bed up. I need to be more authentic. I at least need to be a more sensitive person to the challenges that people in poverty have. So I said, you're gonna volunteer eight hours, you're gonna look at people in the eye, you're gonna connect in a meaningful way, and my students kind of looked at me the way some of you are, which is whatever. Mark Brugel's commitment and was becoming an obsession, be according to his grade. friends and family. Uh, and, and family and friends and colleagues would all, always talk to me about work-life balance. And I, I did not uh, spend enough time with my parents, and they would tell me all the time I was not spending enough time with them. <laughs> but he would always have an answer. Look, the people we're serving don't have an opportunity. They're not lucky enough to talk about work-life balance. They would give anything to work. I'm a single mom and I don't have much. So the things that I'm getting now, it'll, it'll help a lot. Where we can commit to people who need our assistance, we should make that commitment. A wider circle has become a huge success. And now Burgell has moved on to deal with poverty nationally by starting the Shared Humanity Project. He is proud of his success and now reflects on the past and his lack of a work-life balance. To the point of could I have been more understanding, I would say the answer is yes, I could have been more understanding. That's a nice photo of my folks. Can, um, I can make sure that time with family is a part of my priorities. And so in June, Mark Burgell will pack up his bags and move closer to his parents in Florida. So I'm just going to read a, uh, a Facebook post uh, that I shared about my move uh, to live close to my parents. It goes like this. After 36 years of living in the D.C. region, I am moving closer to my parents in Florida. For decades, I eschewed time with friends and family in order to work hard in creating local solutions for poverty. Now it will be a both and. I want to watch the final round of every major golf tournament on Sundays with my dad instead of talking about them on Sunday night over the phone. Great, my dad was a great football player. Really? He got into college because he was a great running back in Providence, Rhode Island, and then he was a, an excellent running back at Brandeis University. When there's a great college football game on Saturday or a pro game on Sunday, I don't want to recount it over the phone during the week. I want to hear his commentary in person. I want to take my mom to lunch, maybe to some interesting places if she will let me. And I don't want to send her gifts on Mother's Day or her birthday anymore. I want to hand them to her. Mark Burgell believed he needed the courage to make the commitment to build a wider circle. Now he realizes it takes courage to step back just a little to see another side of life. It's time for a new chapter, and this feels like a joyous and exciting next step. I believe the move will make me more whole, and I know it will fill my soul. I know how lucky I am that my parents are so healthy 
and they don't need me, uh, perhaps I need them more than they need me. When we talk about protections and safeguards, it is really important to know that there are 14 states in these United States that currently have anti-LGBTQ legislation proposed. That if you hurt one member of their family, you hurt every member of their family. Our LGBTQ residents are, have been, of course, disproportionately suffering from health disparities for quite a while. They've also been, also been disproportionately hit by COVID because of higher than average HIV and cancer rates and existing health barriers. We must stand together on days like today to lift all of our community up to stand united against hate. These kinds of celebrations like Pride Month send a signal. It sends a signal especially to our young people that Montgomery County is here for you. Folks will no longer be silent in the face of homophobia, transphobia, bigotry, and solidarity for all of our LGBTQIA members of our community to say happy Pride Month. It took me 40 years to figure out who I was, but once I did, I was able to say, hey, this is who I truly am, and I want to be able to support and continue supporting other transgender people out. As parents, as family and friends, we have to make sure that we're taking care of our young people, how they are going to live their lives and who they are going to love, recognizing that's how they were born. We need to be supportive. It's graduation season. Caps, gowns, diplomas, and motorcycles? Cars? And horses? Cars and horses. The fifth graders at Mill Creek Town, Cashel, and Sequoia Elementary Schools got a special surprise for graduation. Thanks to Irene Johnson, whose son Easy goes to Mill Creek Town. I'm a little excited for today um, because something small is turning out to be really big. Big indeed. Because of COVID restrictions, the graduation ceremonies were toned down. Come to Magruder and set up. So Irene Johnson made some big noise to make the graduates feel special. All kinds of exotic vehicles met at the Magruder High School parking lot. Is this the Indy 500? You would think so. <laughs> I decided to have a car parade. Instead of having parents and friends and family in it, I just got super cool motorcycles, fast cars, horses, fire trucks, to be in the parade, to throw out candy to the kids. The kids were five miles away at Irene's house. Kids, I don't think, have any idea going to be happening today in front of the house. I think it's going to be like a casual parade, just like a normal parade, with things, uh, with things just like going down or up. But some were a little suspicious. I'm pretty sure that there's something else. There is some factor that I am missing somehow. The factor was Irene Johnson and her love of having fun. The kids get to see them, their friends, after a year of not seeing them and through the computer screen, they get to see them in real life. Great way to celebrate. It's important because I'm graduating fifth grade and I spent most of it online. Picture. And time flies. I love this. I love Back to the Future. This is incredible. We even did the hoverboard. I love celebrating the kids. We just came out of COVID and all these kids have been locked up, pins up. What a way to celebrate them. The pandemic, I'm sorry the pandemic happened and the kids were kind of isolated. But so many good things have come out of it. I love horses! Me too! Like, we probably would have never done a car parade if it wasn't for the pandemic. But I think this is going to be a normal thing. I think I might just do it every year. I'm going to do it every year. Why not? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. 
Well, that does it for this edition of The Bottom Line. For County Cable Montgomery, I'm Susan Kennedy.